P oh, to B. I'm... You need to just stay there. I don't want you in this yet. Okay? So, how does it look? Kind of go from here. You don't need to get my feet. Yeah, no, I just got to get your hat. Okay. Or Remember, what? if it's if the battery starts blinking red, it's low battery, mm -hmm. you need to stop. Mm -hmm. And you need to tell me. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is it blinking red, like recording? Yes, it's recording a long time ago. I told you. Oh. Okay, be still. Ready? Hi, everyone. It's Rita with Everything Homemade. And... <clears throat> Hi, it's Rita with Everything Homemade. And in this particular garden episode, we are going to make a super greens mix. And I know hundreds of thousands of people go to the health food store and they buy those little um, containers with a powdered green mix. Now, what we're gonna do today is make a homemade version. Let's take a look at what we have in the garden and some of the super foods we have as herbs now i'm going to use what i have the this is not going to limit you this is just what i have in the garden so take a look around you take a look at at the greens you're growing and also at the wild greens such as dandelion leaves and with dandelion leaves we're doing this closer to the fall a lot of the the leaves the herbs that i'm going to be cutting here are on the second growth so ideally you want to do your greens the first growth okay they just they got a little bit more um nutrition behind it the second growth there's nothing wrong i've taken down this parsley here it has already sprung back and grew back and it's beautiful looking because of the good weather now that we have but ideally you want to do it on the first cut so i didn't think about doing this film at that time but i'm going to show it to you now but if you have the opportunity just when those leaves nice tender leaves come up that's the prime time to get as much leaves as you can and then you can continue doing it all season long and get a huge amount of greens powder so especially with dandelion dandelion leaves are the best in the spring they're not as bitter and you'll notice even right now they're losing their vigor they're actually turning brownish purple so so really the best prime time to do things is in June. June is a really good time for um, wild crafting herbs and leaves because they're at their prime. So that's a little bit of information there. This is gonna be quite simple. This isn't actually that hard to do and you're gonna be blown away how fast you can make a really nutritional greens mix for pennies instead of spending hundreds in the store. So let's get started. So the very first thing you want to do is come outside with some kind of bowl. You can have a bucket, something to obviously put in your greens. So the first thing we're going to do is harvest this um, parsley right here. So when you're doing parsley, you want to take a handful and you want to just cut it. You're not going to kill the plant because there's always new little leaves at the bottom and it comes from the middle. So you, it's okay to just cut it straight across. So let's take a look at all these here and just watch me harvest this wonderful parsley. And the chamomile is growing so good. I'm just going to move the chamomile out of the way a little bit here. So this is curly parsley. You can definitely use a different, there's different varieties of parsley. And it doesn't matter what variety you want to use. I just prefer curly parsley. I like the flavor of it better. There's our 
parsley. So now what we're going to do is we're going to move into the garden and we're going to start cutting down the kale. So this is our kale here and remember I took it down now almost twice now and it's come back in full force. So we're going to take all of this down for the greens mix as well. And what we're going to do is we're just going to take the knife here because the stems are fairly thick and we're going to just chop the stems off. In the house we'll be taking the leaves off the stem. So I'm just going to throw that into a bigger pail here. So I'm going to continue to harvest all of this kale here and then I'll show you how much it is when we're done. So I've got this bucket pressed down full and if you can see there's still a lot of green here but the leaves that I'm leaving behind are really um, bug bitten. I took the best leaves out of this grouping. So let's move on. The broccoli here, like I said, if if I the best time to do this is the spring. These leaves are really badly bitten. I took the best out already and I froze those leaves, so I'm going to leave the broccoli, but you can definitely use broccoli leaves. I would just use them younger than than the time frame that I'm doing it right now. So the next plant I am going to do is Swiss chard. Swiss chard is a really good superfood as well. And there's lots of nice fresh greens. You see how, how young these ones are in the middle? And this is what I want. Now, if you like red beets, you can definitely do red beet leaves as well. I prefer Swiss chard leaves over red beets, but this comes down to personal preference. It doesn't come down to you can't use it. It's just what people like, right? There's all these different kind of leaves with different flavors and I really like Swiss chard, so I'm going to take Swiss chard down here and I'm going to take all these tender leaves again. I'm just cutting on this thick stem here. And I'm just going to pile it on top of my kale. And this, why, this is why it's so easy. I mean, you can plant your plants, but usually you can get two or three harvests off each plant throughout the season. Now that's up north here. If you're living in different climates, you, you may get more off your plants just because you got a longer season than what I have. Okay, you notice that I'm taking the really young leaves off. This one's not too bad, but I'm not going to take these older leaves right here off because they're, they're more bug bitten. I want the really young leaves and those have the most nutrition anyway in them. Look at this plant. Beautiful, isn't it, Grace? Yeah. So this leaf, for example, you see it has that yellow on it? That's not a very good, good leaf. So I'm just going to throw that over the fence to the goats. They can enjoy it. Okay, so this is a, what I would say is a jam-packed bucket. This is a five-gallon pail. So it is right full. So the other leaves that are really good for you here are these carrot tops. So I'm going to get another pit or another bowl and we're going to start harvesting some carrot tops.
Okay, so with our carrots, I like to make sure that we're using the carrots to eat as well. If you don't want to do that, take a look at the base here. You got that, Grace, for them? Take a look at the base. There yeah. is more than one leaf um, so you can definitely let's say pull a leaf like that off and then then you have have a leaf here just like that but what I like to do with carrots is if I know we're gonna eat some carrots I just pull them right out because this is our eating row anyway and that way that way I just have the whole plant and I have a ton of tops okay so there's some wonderful carrots right there. And then what you want to do is just is just take the tops off. And then you have the carrots. And then I have two bowls right over here. So then I put carrot tops in one bowl. And I put carrots in the next bowl. Okay, so got all these carrots right here, so I'm gonna get some more and we're gonna have yummy carrots and beans and turkeys to turkey tonight. So all of this will get eaten up and look at the beautiful carrot tops. So they're nice and green. They're, um, they're not full of aphids. Sometimes your carrots can have aphids on them. Most of the time they're pretty good. So they're wonderfully healthy. And that's what you want. You want the best for your greens mix. So now that we have our carrot tops, our Swiss chard, our kale, our, our um, parsley, what we're gonna do is take these into the house and I'm gonna start to show you how to process them and get them ready for the dehydrator. Now again, I'm gonna stress that this isn't limited to just these items. This is what I have in the garden that is bountiful in the garden for a greens mix, but you can use dandelions, you can use romaine lettuce, you can use um, spinach as well. You can go and do a search on superfoods and when you plan your garden, grow some of the the greens that are superfoods and to have them in your garden to make your own greens mix. So think a little bit ahead for next year. Go, what do I like to eat? What do I like the flavors of? And grow them in your garden for your superfood mix. And that'll save you a ton of money. Plus, you know then it's 100% organic. You know exactly what is in that mix. And, and if you take a look at how much we have here, remember we got a five gallon bucket pack of kale and Swiss chard. And, it'll be, and then we have some carrot tops here and then we have the other, other bowl packed with parsley. Now the big question is, when you take all of this food, how much does it compress into powder? Well. Let's go inside, start processing, and let's see. Okay, so now that we're inside, I'm going to lay down a few tea towels here. So when I dry, when I wash my leaves, I'm going to put the leaves here and kind of drip, but that drip onto the tea towel. That way it doesn't make such a big mess. Um, you can figure out whatever system you want. So the first leaves we're gonna do is the parsley. So the parsley, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my sink here. What I'm gonna do is dump my parsley into my clean sink. Because, take a look, there's a little bug. Okay, this is organic, so there's gonna be some bugs. And that's what you wanna wash out. So what I wanna do is, is rinse this with cold water and I'm looking for maybe you know dead dead um, grass that's in here um, even leaves that maybe shouldn't have been in here when I initially cut it so I'm basically giving it a really good wash and and gets any dirt too that that is out so I'm just gonna 
kind of give it a good good rinse. I'm giving it a really um, quick visual, and then what I like to do is squeeze it out a bit because curly um, the curly parsley likes to hold the water. I'm basically going and kind of swishing the water in with the parsley and just really just washing it that way. And this way too, I'm not running my water constantly. Um, where we live here, we have a cistern, so, so we're always watching how much water consumption we're doing. And this parsley is fairly clean, so now I'm gonna just give it a quick rinse, squeeze it out, and then over here, I'm just literally gonna throw it to the corner and let a little bit of the water drip off before it hits our cutting boards. So now that my sink is basically empty, I'm not too sure if you can see that on the screen, but Grace, try to get a close look at the water. You can see all the little bit of dirt and and there's actually some little bugs in, in here in the water after we did wash it. So it's, that's, it's always good to wash your leaves when they come into the house because initially they might look clean, but there's always some kind of dirt or insects that are on it. So what we wanna do, what I like to do is just drain it for the next batch. Okay, so now we have the Swiss chard here. So I'm gonna take that off the top of the kale. And again, I'm gonna put it in my sink. And this time I'm gonna do an extra step here because I'm already working with the, the chard. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rinse it off really well, and then I'm going to actually take the leaves off this, this heavy, heavy stem right here. And so I'm just going to discard this stem and use the leaves. So, and when I use the leaves again, I'm just going to put it here beside the parsley and just make a pile over there. All right, so I'm gonna let my sink fill up here. I'm just gonna swish it for the moment um, and clean them up. All right, so again, like all these, these um, young leaves, I'm just going to take off and then I'm just gonna do an extra swish in the water, check it out, looks clean, and then discard that heavy, heavy stem. So I'm gonna keep on going through this um, Swiss chart here and then we'll start on the kale. Okay, it is kale's turn now. And as I was cleaning the Swiss chart, I thought about one really important piece of information. And that is that I'm adding parsley to this mix. If you are breastfeeding, Taking a large amount of parsley is not recommended because it is the perfect herb to dry up breast milk. And because of that, sage and parsley are the one of the two worst herbs to, to take. So if you're making a homemade blend, pay attention to whatever medical issues you have or whether you are pregnant or whether you're breastfeeding because some herbs are very potent, okay? Some can cause preterm labor, some can dry up breast milk, so just do your research a bit, especially when it comes to herbs, and parsley is the one of the number one herbs that will dry up your breast milk. So just pay attention to that. So we are going to wash the kale here, and we are going to do it in the same fashion as we did the Swiss chart, because really anything with this really, really heavy, thick stem, you wanna just take the leaves off of it, and then I just feed out the heavy stem to my critters. Um, the cows love them, the, the goats love them. There's lots of things that, that will eat it, and we're basically just washing up the kale like we did the Swiss chart. So, so take a look at the pile that, that we got going there already. 
it's starting to look really good and I'm just going to continue here to wash the kale. So as you can see I have still a lot of kale to wash here. I've done about half that bucket. The carrot tops we're going to do exactly like we did the parsley so we can use the entire carrot tops. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to demonstrate to you how to chop this up and then I'm, Ocean is going to join me right here and she's going to continue to chop while I continue to wash so it goes just a little faster. Your biggest time consuming um, section of this whole greens mix is actually the washing, getting everything clean and prepped. So I have my parsley here, my Swiss chard here, my kale. So I'm going to grab a little bit of everything here just to show you. And you would do the carrot tops the exact same way you would do the parsley. So with the parsley, what I like to do is I like to form a ball, a nice tight ball when I chop it. As much as you can. With a sharp knife, you basically are cutting across of it like you would cut, you know, some meat or something like that. Basically, you're just getting the initial chop into it. Then what I want to do is just chop it up. You don't need it crazy fine, but just fine enough that it's going to dry super quick. And once you chop it up just a little bit like this, it's going to dry within six hours. When you, if you don't do that, um, I find it just takes longer to dry. So what I then what I want to do is take my parsley, I put it on my tray, and you can put it fairly thick on your tray, and it will still dry adequately. So that's what I'm going to do with all the parsley, with the. Swiss chard, exact kind of same thing, only I can get a better ball with the leaves. But basically what I want to do is just chop them up a bit and that way they just dry better and they dry faster. And you just lock that nutrients in. So I'm just going to chop it up just a little bit and that is it. I'm going to put that on my tray. And then the same idea, the technique goes for all these greens. I roll them up and chop. And it, you'll just be amazed how quick they'll dry like this on your dehydrator. It literally um, cuts your time at least in half. And there you go. And then I'm going to put my kale on there. And this tray here is, is full. And now I'm going to start the next tray. And that is exactly what I'm going to do with the carrot tops. Just roll them up and cut them up when I wash them. So Ocean's going to be working here and chopping while I continue to wash. So you can see such a huge pile of kale here. Think about how many salads it would take you to eat all of this kale and that's why green powders are so unique and so commonly used to boost the nutrition because it just would take you so long to eat all this and when you take a tablespoon of greens powder you're taking in so much more greens and you can see here I've got some helpers here I got ocean on my right here and I have Grace here on my left and they're helping me out chopping. And Ocean here is doing the carrot tops and she basically is just cutting them lengthwise and that works really really simply. Grace here is cutting up a bit of kale and I'm over here where there's no one with the knife there that's where I'm cutting up kale. So take a look at the trays here so we're we're putting the carrot tops on this tray the kale again you can you can put it fairly heavily ocean has done another tray right here 
So right now we have five trays full. She's gonna be we're gonna be working on our sixth. Grace is working on the seventh there. And we're just gonna continue to fill our trays until we're done. Then we'll put them on the dehydrator. So we are down in our basement here and we have split these two trays as even as we can because we have 15 trays but the very last tray that we cut isn't really full yet this tray is very full so Ocean is just going to transfer some of the kale onto this tray now we got 15 jam-packed trays and what we're gonna do is once Ocean is done there that's pretty good Ocean is we're gonna put the lids on top of our dehydrator now this is the dehydrator we are using and that I love so much I really like American Harvest um, I really love this dehydrator for a couple of reasons one it really dries well you very minimal switching up trays um, rotating them I have five of them and I, I, we have high success, they don't die right away, plus they're all closed up so there's no light penetrating in the dehydrator except from the very top here but it's very very minimal and they just dry super well. So Ocean if you can twist one of the dehydrator so we can see the setting um, area to it please. What you want to do is have this setting to the coolest. So right now, I was dehydrating something else and, and right now it's set to 145 Fahrenheit. That is way too hot for herbs. So we want to switch the setting here to the very last setting and that is herbs and spices. So whatever dehydrator you're using, this one here is dehydrating at 95 Fahrenheit or 35 Celsius. You want it at the coolest temperature. You do not want to cook your herbs or spices and in this case my greens you don't want to cook them all you want to do is dry them and the nice thing is when you're di drying in the dehydrator is you keep it green okay because they're drying so fast you're keeping the nice green color so ocean let's turn them on and there's no off and on switch it's just when you plug it in they automatically turn on and to double check, make sure they're on, you should feel um, the fan kick on and you should feel the air at the top of each one. Ocean, this one's not on here. There we go. Perfect. Um, and, and go. So depending on what you're drying, when you cut them up like that, you are looking at a dry time between 6 to 12 hours. So I'm going to check these before I go to bed tonight. That'll give us 6 hours. If they're not dry, then I'll leave them overnight and shut them off first thing in the morning. So they will not take long to dry. Okay, so we are down here in our basement again to check on the dehydrators. So Ocean, you're going to turn them off. And I've already checked them and they are done. But I'm going to show you how to test if your, your greens are finished. So Ocean, why don't you open up the lid? And you hear that noise? They're crispy dry and that's exactly what you want. Now Ocean, what I want you to do is just snap that, that leaf in half for that's me. Fine. Yeah. You see that? Zero moisture is left and that's what you need in order to blend it up in powder form. If there is a slight bit of moisture, then it's not going to go into powder. So I want you to just remove this tray for a moment Ocean. So let's look at a fuller tray and do a test there as well. Perfect. That's we'll take the sound a you want. Leaf and break it. Yeah, and try it out. Whew, and it's perfect. Poppy. Yep, it's perfect. Oh, so yeah. what we're gonna do is we're gonna transfer all these trays now upstairs ocean to the blender. Now we are going to be using a Blendtec blender you can definitely use basically any kind of blender. Before I had the blend tech, I just used a $50 blender, although I did kill a lot of blenders, didn't I? Yes. 
for for what I do because I do um, make butter and stuff like that in my blender but for this application just any blender I mean will work just fine you're just turning these leaves into powder so you don't need it crazy high powered so Ocean why don't we take these upstairs and show them the magic in the blender so the first step after you take the dehydrators from downstairs or wherever you have them and get them into the kitchen you need to take the greens off the tray now Ocean it is you can just go from the tray to the blender but why do we do this step because if you just try and do that there's a higher possibility of spilling more greens so this way it's cleaner that's right because through all these holes once you start going like this and grabbing things it kind of makes a mess so what we like to do is spill all the contents from the dehydrator into a larger bowl and that way you can really clean the trays well and then everything is in the bowl so you're just putting your hand in now I really like having my children um, show you how to do this for a couple of reasons one they enjoy um, helping out mom and learning the other thing is I'm also teaching them as we go so I'm also teaching you guys but I'm also teaching my children so they are equipped with all of the tools they need when they are ready to do it themselves and so if you slip with the dehydrator tray you end up decorating mom's floor <laughs> so, okay so as you can see these are the carrot tops and you notice the beautiful color here yeah it's carrot I mean you want it green okay and that's why it's really nice to do a quick dry in the dehydrator because it maximizes the nutrients and it it doesn't discolor it goes right into drying instead of yellowing there's parsley oh that smells good oh I know like like the parsley and if you rub it just a little bit and then put it to your nose it's smell that heavier it's smell that that is so good I know I know Such I know a it is smell so as she does these what, what, what we would like to do is take these um, kind of mats and just make sure you shake it out and shake out the dehydrator because we do use them over and over again mm -hmm. so she's gonna yeah. we're gonna continue doing this I'm gonna give her a hand and then we'll get to the blending do you remember how much greens there were when we washed them it was crazy the pile was huge now it has shrunk to a bowl full what Ocean's gonna do here now is take the bowl to beside the blender here and she's gonna fill it to the two cup mark now depending on your blender you can fill it one cup two cups three cups to four cups but sometimes if you fill the blender up too full it doesn't blend really smooth I find depending on your blender so we're gonna do two cups no a little bit more than that and and we're gonna do the first blending okay so let's start with that because I can't remember I know with with uh, tomato chips you can't fill all the way full and I do so much blending that sometimes I forget how full I do things so let's do it at two cups let's do it on setting we're going to do it on setting three which is a lower setting and see what happens Okay, open it up and take a look at that so I want it actually a bit finer than that so we're gonna add more in so the blender has a little bit um, more to blend so fill it fill it right up and then we're gonna go on a little bit higher powder higher then we're going to go in a little bit higher power so you just kind of got to feel out your blender I sometimes forget exactly what I do and, and it's just a matter of playing with it 
So what I want you to do is we'll go on fairly high power ocean. So bump it up to next Five. one to about six. Yeah. Okay, so Ocean, let's see your hand. <laughs> and let's pop it open. Woo, dusty. Yeah, it's going to be a bit dusty. Okay, so that is what I want to see. You see how we manipulated it? Um, so in this case, you want more. You want it on a higher speed. We we're doing it at the first time. We we're doing it a little bit too low a speed and not enough. And that's what you want. And you wanted, we were... On this batch, we did 40 seconds. So, I'll get a container. So, take a look at that. And now you can start seeing this beautiful green powder come to fruition. It's absolutely beautiful. So, yes, yeah, so let's grab, grab a container, Ocean. And let's take that container to the table. Yeah. And so that made, what, probably two tablespoons is in there of powder. And I'm just going to take it here with my fingers here, and it's very fine. And it tastes good, too. Does it? Yep, I can taste parsley and everything in there. It tastes like dried, le like dried lettuce and kale chips and everything all together. Awesome. Let's let's do another another blending. Okay, so we're going to make one little bit of change here because I last year I had to get a new Blendtec um, container because mine actually busted and Blendtec was so awesome to send me a complete replacement. Uh, they upgraded their lid and and. Uh, it's it leaking a lot of the greens through it. So I actually kept the old lid, even though the jar busted. So we're going to use the old style lid because it seals a little bit better for this application. So go ahead and stick the other one on, Ocean. Oh, we need to put the greens in first? Yes, we need to put the greens in first. So let's fill this up to four cups. We, we can definitely do that. So what do you think, you guys? How much green powder are we going to make? We're going to measure it at the very end and see. But take some guesses. All of these greens, how many cups of green powder is going to be the end result? Okay, so let's do this one more time. So Ocean on, on high, so six, make sure, Ocean, make sure this lid goes down quite a bit more. It seals a little bit tighter. Perfect. On six, and here we go. Okay, oh, so yeah, open it up. Just, you gotta hold that top on there, because, there we go, and flip it over. Let's take a look. Absolutely beautiful, so that worked out very very well oh I can smell the parsley tell me about it because I got I hit a parsley rich I can smell it so what we what you want to do is after you've blended everything you definitely want to mix this thoroughly so you don't have a spot in it that's you know more concentrated with um, kale or parsley after so we're gonna go ahead we're going to blend this all up, we're going to mix it, and then we'll see how much we made. Okay, so when you're doing this, note to self, there's always going to be a little bit of mess because you're dealing with powder, but we didn't lose too, too much on the table. 
So how much did we get? Well, take a look. Basically exactly three cups of greens. So you can imagine how expensive this measuring cup full of fresh green powder will be in the store. There's no fillers. You know exactly what went in here. It's not radiated. It's 100% organic and absolutely delicious. And Ocean keeps on sneaking stuff out to eat. So it can't be tasting that bad, can it, Ocean? No. Um, she, she says she quite enjoys the mix. So there you got it from, from a 12-year-old so that's pretty awesome. So this is jam-packed, jam-packed with nutrients. So I can't tell you exactly what you're getting per teaspoon or per tablespoon, but you can definitely see how much greens we started with to what we get. I mean, a tablespoon of greens from this powder is definitely going to boost your intake of greens. So she's just going to mix it here because we haven't mixed it yet. Make sure there's no um, pockets of one certain green. And what you want to do is store this in an airtight container. So such as, you know, even if you have bought previously green mixes, you can put this back into the jar. You can use a canning jar, you can use um, any kind of container, just make sure it has a nice tightly fitting lid and you'll be good to go. Um, take this however you want it. You can eat it plain. Ocean's been, been taking some just plain here. You can also put it in capsules if you can't handle the taste of green powder. You can buy um, ways to make homemade capsules. You can also put this in a liquid. You can put it in a smoothie. Some people put it in their kefir, in their yogurt, sprinkled over um, oatmeal in the morning. There is many ways you can definitely boost your nutrition um, using this green powder. And if you would do this all summer long, so let's say every second week you go to the garden and get a five gallon pail of whatever fresh greens you have growing and, and you keep dehydrating, you can imagine how much green powder you would end up at the end of the season. You would save hundreds of dollars making it yourself and you don't need a big garden. I'm gonna stress that you don't need a huge garden to get greens. Greens. You can harvest the row, it'll grow back in a few weeks. Harvest again and grow back, harvest again. So you don't need hundreds of hundreds of plants to do this. Um, so it is practical for a small garden to a large garden to even a garden, you know, in pots on your on your porch or your deck or in, in your apartment to do this. So this is definitely a really, really cool way to boost your nutrition for pennies in comparison to buying it from the health food store. So thank you so much, you guys, for watching. And just to let you know that book two is out, Heart's Courage. All the links are in the description box below. Enjoy your greens powder. Leave some comments. And we'll see you on the next video.